In this video, we're using the old coffee grinder from Fellow together with our April brewing kit. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this video, we're taking a closer look at what is most likely the most anticipated grinder release of 2020. We're talking about the odd grinder from Fellow. So this has basically been launched through Kickstarter and is starting to arrive uh, all over Europe, all over the world, more or less. What we have here is a grinder that we actually got from uh, Coffee Disc in Poland. Uh, that has a lot of cool gears actually so we find ourselves buying quite a lot from them now what we want to do in this video here is to just showcase how we are using this grinder um, when brewing with the april brewing kit so if you want a bit more in detail view on this our thoughts on the positives and the negatives please sign up for our patreon accounts that's where you're going to see all of the nitty-gritty details about this grinder but we are going to walk you through some of the features as well since it is a brand new grinder as always when it comes to new grinders follow the initial instructions season the grinders properly um, we haven't done anything fancy like you know taking out the burst head and kind of try to realign that or look at that we just want to see how it performs kind of straight out of the box after the seasoning process now one of the things that you might want to consider when you use this grinder is the recommendations they have so they have a little bit of a wheel uh, with different grind sizes and when using the standard recipe for the April Brewer uh, which in this case would be 13 grams of coffee to 200 grams of water using a two pour technique then we find ourselves working continuously in between basically number three and number four on the recommended uh, kind of grind size here right so inevitably what you see and kind of what's been the feedback to this grinder up until now um, from a lot of different channels has been we don't really understand what to do with a grind size from five and above. Uh, it doesn't really seem to correlate with our kind of modern style of brewing, especially factoring in that we roast coffee quite light here in April. Um, and basically the lighter you roast to some degree we work with with the coarser grind size. So I can imagine for those that roast quite dark or brew darkly roasted coffee, they're gonna have a pretty hard time finding a grind size that is perhaps suitable. Anyway, we've been testing it and we're kind of excited about the results. Um, and we're working with now, as mentioned, a recipe of 13 to 200, giving us a grind size that is basically just above uh, three so we're using the kind of main market so you have two steps in between each kind of number three to four for example uh, in truth you actually have steps in between those steps but to make this easy we're actually the step right above three now one of the things they're talking about is the noise of the grinder uh, they're talking about also the grind retention uh, which we're going to just kind of test here so the noise of the grinder is arguably less than other grinders which is a positive right so we have 13 grams of coffee here we're using a red honey geisha from Volcan Azul in Costa Rica one of our favorite coffees this year we're gonna pop it in now another cool thing here is that this grinder should turn off by itself more or less uh, so we're just basically gonna start So we could have waited for it to stop by itself, uh, but we find quite often that that takes a bit of extra time and it's kind of unnecessary. I mean, it's great if you're in the morning, want to make a coffee and kind of walk away from the grinder. One of the things uh, we should actually state, uh, just so you guys know out there, is that you probably saw me doing it now as well. We actually had to kind of use the finger to make sure that all of the coffee actually goes down in the burst set. We do have some being stuck in the hopper every once in a while when we're using it. Now, uh, we always use the little flap here three times just to make sure that um, 
we have all of the coffee out in the grinders. Uh, there is a bit of retention otherwise, um, and since the grinder claims that has very little retention, um, you will have retention if you don't do it. So this slides out. And we're going to pour this back into the little dosing cup. We're going to have a closer look at the grind size as well, where we see that this is actually, like, by any means, a very coarse grind size. So on Comandante, this will be for sure about 30 clicks, more or less, right? Um, and keep in mind then we get, we get that kind of grind size even on a fairly kind of low setting or fine setting on this grinder. So we're pouring this over. You need to be a bit careful using um, this little funnel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it gets a bit messy sometimes. So we basically had 13.2 grams of coffee um, going in, and now we have 12.8 grams of coffee. Uh, just as a side note. So for the sake of our recipe, we grounded some more coffee and made sure that we had exactly 13 grams of coffee in our dose. Now, one of the questions we often get with April Brewer is how, um, what do you guys recommend for larger brews? And as mentioned here before, we're pushing 13 to 200. We're doing it in 100 grams pour, which we recommend doing with all recipes basically. So regardless of how you scale it, stick with 100 grams. Uh, for example, 20 to 300 or um, 30 to 500. And when we do these pour, what we wanna do is we wanna start with a circle pour. We usually do that 30 or 40 grams and we wanna finish off with the center pour, which then is gonna be basically 70 or 60 grams in total. And that's one continuous pour. And this is important because it's going to help you with the flow rate um, and it's going to improve the texture of the final cup of coffee as well. So, for example, what we recommend here in terms of this grinder is that if you work 20 to 300, we would jump one cl click up, which is basically then 3.2 or just below 4. Um, and if you want to go up and do an even larger brew using this grinder in our brewer, we would go up basically pushing 30 to 500 and we would do that on the grind setting 4. So we really don't see any reason for why you want to be coarser than 4 on this grinder using the April Brewer. And again, keep in mind that how the coffee is roasted is going to have a big impact on the actual taste or flow rate of the coffee, right? So basically a darker coffee is gonna have a water going through faster than what a lighter roasted coffee would be. And that should be taken into consideration with your grind size as well. Um, that also goes for the brewing water you use. If you use a very hard water or very soft water, that also gonna go through the coffee differently. And then you need to consider where you wanna be grind size, which is interesting with this grinder. But again, keep in mind if you want more kind of in-depth details and thoughts and ideas on this grinder, sign up for our Patreon. Uh, we already pushed two videos out there specifically for our members that get to see the kind of behind the scene function of this grinder um, and how we use it and how we don't use it. So the total brew time here for our standard recipe is going to be 220, which is again actually a tiny bit faster than what we're used to. So you could actually, if you want to, go even finer using this recipe. But what you end up here is a TDS around 1.25, 1.27, which is quite often where we want to be when it comes to our copies here at April. Now, that was just a quick kind of introduction in terms of how we use Fellow Snoo Grinder Ode to brew with the April Brewing Kit. Now, if you have any experience with it yourself, if you want to know more, if you have questions or comments, if you want to see a full review, then please join our Patreon. Um, if you have further questions or ideas, then comments below. We're always really happy when you come with your thoughts, your opinions, and your recommendations. With that, we want to say thank you very much for tuning in and wish you a great day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. 
And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.